So this is the hidden cost of owning an EV. So we have been using the Ola S1 Pro Gen 1, Ola S1 Pro Gen 2, Aether 450X for about a year now. So we got access to the Aether Rista and I have been daily driving it for about a month now. Now whenever I ride this EV somewhere, the questions are... Wait, wait, wait. What's the range? What's the charging cost? How much is the electricity bill? And how does the battery age? And the entire controversy of Ola has defaulted on payments 20 crore rupees. Electric scooter catching fire recently. 10,000 complaints, delayed services, unresolved refund issues, and overall deficiencies in the company's after sales service. Well, people are always curious when you ride an EV. And since more people are thinking of getting an EV, the biggest hidden cost of an EV is battery. Like if you buy an Activa which costs about 90,000 rupees and EV on the other hand, suppose Rista, costs roughly 1.1 lakh rupees. And you might think that this 15,000 difference, well, I'll recover it in the next 2-3 to three years because hey, no petrol, it's free. But did you know that on average, in an EV, the battery costs about 40% of the price of the scooter. If you have to replace that battery, what will be the cost in top 4 selling EVs in India, Bajaj Chetak, Ola S1 Pro, Aether Rista, TVS IQ, and how faster the battery degrades. Like this baby has ridden 5,000 kilometers in a year. This has ridden 10,000 kilometers in two years. Equally ridden scooters. We live test battery health, test the brand claims of battery warranty, everything. This is a super long term video that we wanted to do. Let's go or let's ride. Like. Now, before we get to the whole story of the battery, there are a few fundamental differences between a petrol scooter and an EV. Like number one, EVs have modes. See, Activa doesn't have any riding modes. There are some scooters like the TVS Entox which has riding modes, but it's not that important in them. Whereas in an EV, modes are very important. Like for example, let's take the Aether Rista. It has two modes, a Smart Eco mode and a Zip mode. So if you see, as soon as I change mode, the range of the scooter changes. And plus the riding experience in different modes is way different. Like if I'm here in Smart Eco mode, you see I can accelerate fast but the top speed is capped to 50 km per hour, which is good for traffic, but it's too low for a highway ride. And if you move to zip mode, see I can almost touch 80 km per hour. Similarly, in Ola S1 Pro, there are way lot of modes, like four modes, and the range depends on the type of mode that you are riding in. Now, EV companies make it very hard to understand, but I'll just tell you one simple logic. See, the highest range that you will get is in Eco or Smart Eco mode. Never buy looking at that range. It's practically impossible for a lot of people to drive in that Eco range on a day-to-day -day basis. Rather, you should look at the second mode or the mode just above Eco mode. That is your real world range that you will get. Like, for example, take this Aether Rista. In real world life, I get about 100 to 105 kilometers and that is the real world range and the range that you see on the dashboard of the Aether Rista is bang on accurate whereas in case of Ola the range that you see here in real life you will get 10 to 20 percent less kilometers this range on the dashboard is not accurate for Ola now if you want to know more differences of a petrol scooter versus EV scooter we have already done a dedicated video on it do check that out but now let's get to the hidden things that you don't see while buying an EV there are three things that you should always check no matter what the brand is number one charging and service expense. Now, unlike traditional scooters, EVs are only serviced every 5,000 km. So, in my case, I only serviced it once this last year. Surprisingly, I only spent 1100 rupees on the scooter for an entire year. Like, this is the invoice. Let me show you. So, this is the actual service cost of 826 rupees with labor charges. The rest was getting the handle grips changed. Now, with Ola, you would have heard all the service center woes, like all the bad experience. So, the first service cost about 700 to 1000 rupees. Again, a very personal experience. We wanted to repair the Ola scooter and in fact service it. The service center near our office location completely denied because there are a lot of scooters to be serviced. They don't have enough people to do it. Now we had to get it partially serviced from a far off service center. Coming to Bajaj Chetak and TVS IQ, we inquired about the service cost and spoke to people. Roughly all of them had a service cost of about 1000 to 1500 rupees per year. Now this depends on how much you ride. I am considering city commute which should be roughly 5000 to 6000 km per year. If your kilometer doubles, the service cost also doubles. So whenever you buy an EV, service cost and brand service network is the most important thing to check. Now coming to the charging expense at home, I revealed in this video over here, oh, here. It takes about four to five units to charge the scooter 100%. In Delhi, that's free. 200 units of electricity are free or was free, not sure. So in theory, I have not paid anything for the past one year to charge the scooter.
Now the second most important part is charging network. Now personally I feel charging network is much more critical when you are talking about four wheeler EV because they go out station. With a two wheeler EV you will mostly be doing city commute and 90% of the times you will be charging your EV at home. But it's important to know for those 10% emergency scenarios how the charging network of the company is. So we'll do a real life test. Shobik will oh my god. Shobik will go on the Ola. I'll go on my Ather and we'll give you real time status of the charging network. And this has been the experience in our place. So Ather showed this charging network around our place and I have never visited this particular charging network, but Ather keeps on increasing the charging network as you can see there are 13 charging stations around here. So let's see and visit how it goes. So we thought we were in the middle of nowhere there are very slim gullies roads and everything and we thought this is a mistake there could not be a charging station here and this is like a very random place we have never come here and then turns out you walk here and you have two ether charging points both of them are available and this is in middle of a village mm -hmm. in sector 45 and so proper charging station like i don't know if it's coming across through the video but we are stunned like this. how can you have a charging station in such a place like fantastic man. <sighs> so it's the next day. Yesterday I took the Ola scooter for charging, and there was this <laughs> one charging point. That's it, a charging box with a single charging point. And if you are not carrying your charger, you are done. They don't offer you chargers, and that is like the one charging point across Delhi and Sia. There are no other specific like charging stations. Now after charging the ether I received a bill on my phone like I charged for 15 minutes and see I received a bill of about 15 rupees some paisa so ether charging stations are paid in these locations you have to pay 1 rupees per minute it's a really good facility in case you are stranded and you want to use something in emergency unlike ola it works Now TVS IQ doesn't provide any charging network but you can charge them at the service center for free or even at a paid third party charging station like Ather lets you plug in the charger of any scooter so you can pay and charge but overall I think Ather is the only one who is working or has a trustable charging network in my experience the rest of all the brands is hard to judge as of now in India But what's easy to judge is the battery health and cost. See, in an electric two-wheeler, the most expensive part is the battery. Like for example, the Ather 450X battery replacement cost is sixty thousand rupees. It's about forty to fifty percent cost of the scooter. So the thing is, if this battery doesn't last even like five years only, you will end up paying a lot more than a petrol scooter. Now, smartphone users are pretty much aware of battery health. Like suppose your battery is five thousand mAh when you buy this phone. Year on year, the battery degrades, and after two years, maybe you will get less battery life. But in a scooter, especially in an EV, this degraded battery health will affect the scooter in three ways. Number one, range. If battery health is less, your range will drop down from suppose 100 kilometers to 80 kilometers after five years. Luckily, nothing has happened on mine yet. Number two, top speed. While a scooter's top speed is not directly proportional to the battery's health, there are algorithms and tech that run this scooter. So remember the popular iPhone battery gate, where iPhone would reduce your phone's performance with new update to make sure that the battery life is still good. Same is the case with EV. Top speed can be capped so that the battery doesn't suffer. Number three, acceleration. Now again, to conserve battery, your performance, acceleration, and riding, while on uphill roads, will be tapered down to make sure that the battery is left. Now there are top four popular brands in two-wheeler EVs in India. Bajaj and TVS offer three-year warranty or fifty thousand kilometers, which honestly I feel is too less. So up until three years, a petrol and an EV scooter will cost about the same. And after three years is where you will start seeing real savings when it comes to an EV scooter. So bigger companies like Bajaj and TVS, who own about like fifty percent market share, should at least offer five-year warranty on the battery or. Give the option to upgrade to one. Like that will give confidence to more people to switch to an EV. Now Ola is a bit generous. It comes with a similar three-year warranty or forty thousand kilometers. But if you want, you can pay a bit more and extend the warranty to five years or eight years. Like this is the pricing of that. Ather on the other hand offers the maximum five-year or fifty thousand kilometers warranty by default. And there is also an option that lets you extend the warranty to eight year or eighty thousand kilometer. That's actually a brilliant move and makes people more confident to buy a two-wheeler EV. The extended warranty thing now we compared plans of all brands and this is interesting like brands really like to hide the fine print terms and conditions like ola has a slightly higher price point for 8 year warranty and ether is a bit cheaper and as per our conversation with both of them if you have an older ola scooter 
you cannot get the extended 8 year warranty. But with Aether, you can get 8 years of extended warranty on the battery. But there's a catch. Actually, a couple of them. First, you need to have an Aether Pro Pack, which is the software features list that you get. So basically, you get two invoices while buying the scooter. One is for the scooter and another is for the Aether Pro Pack. And second, you can get 8 year extended warranty on an Aether you have already bought, but it has to be within 90 days of purchase or billing. So in simple words, if you just buy the scooter without Pro Pack, you get three years of warranty for free. If you buy a Aether scooter with Pro Pack, you get three plus two years extra warranty for free. And then there's the third option. If you have Pro Pack, you can extend your five years warranty to additional three years, and then you get a total eight years of warranty at 4999. So just remember this battery warranty like 870. So if before 80,000 kilometer, your battery health falls below 70%, they'll replace it, no questions asked. Now this situation might not arrive but if you have multiple claims of battery replacement within the warranty period like you just got your battery replaced and again it went below 70% battery health just in eight years so there is no upper cap on how many times you can replace the battery in Aether again for Ola we tried finding out how many times can you replace the battery there's no clear answer and it's not clearly defined in warranty documents also with EV since they use app support tracking GPS and all of that even if you turn off the scooter it will still keep losing battery so suppose if you left your scooter at 10% battery and went for a one week trip, day by day it will lose battery and eventually there will be a point when your scooter reaches 0% battery. And this is very rare. If you still leave your EV uncharged for a long period of time, the battery will enter a state where it is below the safe voltage limit. And now your scooter won't even turn on and due to high internal resistance, it won't even charge. This is called deep discharge state and it is very rare. But since all of the EV buyers are first time buyers, Chances are this could happen. Now, guess what? Ola doesn't provide any warranty or assurance for that. Whereas Aether does provide deep discharge assurance. Now, finally, the battery health. So first we went to the Ola service center and surprise, surprise, the service center guy told us that they don't have the access to check battery health. Charging cycle is visible, but cycles are also not allowed. They just say that when it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. So which is again, chalo, fine. So we went to the second service center and that guy resetted the entire scooter and then told us that if there is any problem with the battery, they will entirely replace the battery. It's like I take my bike to the service center and ask them to check the engine oil, whether it's good or not. And the mechanic replies, I will not check. I'll either replace the engine oil or not. Bruh. So if anyone from Ola is watching this, like, bro, it's my scooter. If you don't give me the access to check battery health in this smartphone app, so at least let me check at the service center. And next we went to the Aether service center. It was pretty much smooth. So my battery health after running 5,000 to 6,000 kilometers was 97%. Like as you can see on the screen, it will show you the battery health percentage of individual cells. In simple words, it's 97%. So by that logic, I should be easily able to run my scooter for the next 10 years, which is way more than enough. I probably might not use the scooter after 10 years. So after using these four EVs for about two years now, this is what my experience have been. EVs do quite a little bit good for the environment, but if you are that person like, Tadik, why do I care about the environment? Well, they do save money. Like I have spent only 1100 rupees on my Aether 450X for the past one year. So if you have a city commute of less than 100 kilometers per week, get an EV, you will save a lot on petrol. Like roughly a petrol scooter would cost you 2 rupees per kilometer whereas an EV would cost you 0.2 rupees per kilometer. So now the question is which EV to buy? See in my personal experience, get an Aether. If you want something sporty, get Aether 450X. Like the handling and if you have to overtake quickly in traffic, the 450X feels much more confident and light. We have also done a long term review, you can check it out here. For most family usage, carrying those vegetables and all, occasionally luggage and everything, the Rista is a good choice. Like this is just demo, but three people can sit on the Rista comfortably. And do remember that Aether Rista doesn't have a touch screen. So if you have to send location on the scooter, you'll have to do it via the Aether smartphone app, which I feel my mom and dad won't use. Also, it's a big scooter in length. It's not your usual racing scooter. So it's built only for proper family and household stuff. And if you run behind features and good discounts and don't value good products, these type of scooters will get promoted. Like a couple of people in our office bought the Ola S1 Pro and they would not personally recommend Ola to anyone else around them. So by good products, it genuinely does good for the market as well. And on that note, this is Pradeek signing off. See you in the next video. Hold on, hold on. <laughs>
Ha, 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 ha.